Homeschooling multiple children is hard. Homeschooling kids who are different ages and grades and at different places and have different interests, it's all hard. I am so excited to bring this collaboration video to you all. There are so many amazing mamas, so many that I can't even count anymore. I've lost count how many moms are participating in this, but if you are needing encouragement in the homeschool department, if you are trying to homeschool multiple kids and you just find yourself lost. You can't figure out how to divide up your time. You're having a hard time just making everything flow in your homeschool. That is the motivation behind this video. It just, when you're in that season, when you're in the trenches of trying to homeschool and you're feeling pulled in a million different directions, you've got kids that are all different ages. So you're homeschooling different grades. You're homeschooling multiple children. This is something that's the heart behind this video is there are so many moms coming together. We just really wanted to share our heart and some encouragement and maybe a few tips and tricks along the way that we have learned when homeschooling multiple kids or trying to homeschool with little ones. When you're trying to homeschool one kid and you've got a baby or you've got a toddler running around the house, um, those are hard stages. So many of us homeschool moms have been there. I am not currently in that stage of life. I have, like I said, a 12, 10, and seven year old, but I remember what it was like. And there's a few things that I have up my sleeve that worked in our home that I want to share with you all. So this is a collaboration video, like I said, the playlist is in the description box down below. So if you are a mama in one of those tough seasons, I encourage you when you finish up here with my video, go check out the playlist because I guarantee you there is going to be so much wisdom and there will be something you can take from one of these mamas. So I encourage you to check that out when you're all finished up here. So there are just a few things that I want to share with you here at the beginning of this video and then towards the end, I have a couple resources that I want to share that we used when I was homeschooling, you know, my older children and I had babies or toddlers in tow. There were a couple different tricks and things that I implemented in our home to help make everything flow more smoothly. I'm going to share those with you at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. But one simple thing that I want to share with you right now, which is something I did not embrace in the very beginning stages of homeschooling. I have been homeschooling for almost seven completed years now. And <laughs> and my mind shift, my mentality, everything has changed so much over those seven years. I am not even kidding. It is almost embarrassing to look at where I was when we started versus where we are now. So if you want to see more about that, be sure you hit the subscribe button and follow along here on our journey where I share with you all the ups and downs of homeschooling, the different seasons I've gone through. When we very first started, I was that rigorous, structured, use every piece of um, curriculum that was sent, make sure you do every single problem on every single page. And fast forward to now, things have totally changed. What I have learned over the course of these seven years is to batch or group subjects that you can. Now, what I mean by that is if you are teaching a history lesson, there is no reason that you can't make that history lesson be a group subject. It can be a read aloud. Let it be something that you read with all of your children in your home. If you are doing science, let science be an all-inclusive subject for everybody in your home. It doesn't have to be divided up and everybody be going completely different ways. Now, if you have a high schooler and then you know you have a few years between your children and then you're in grade school, then yes, obviously things are gonna need to look a little bit different. But for right now in our home, just between the age gap that I have between my children, it is very easy to just include everybody in the subjects that we're doing. This can also be tweaked um, to fit your home depending on what curriculum you're using, which we'll get into that later. But I really feel like there are so many subjects that can be all inclusive. So if it's something you haven't tried, give that a shot. Try teaching history together as a read aloud. As an example, we use Masterbooks America's Story for history in our home. So I discovered early on with Masterbooks that I didn't even need the student workbook. I did not need my children to fill out the worksheets. What we did was adjust Masterbooks, the America Story, to fit our home or the heartbeat of our home, if you will. That is my new favorite word. One of one of you sweet moms mentioned that in a comment a while back, and it is now my favorite my favorite term, my favorite word when describing homeschooling, but you will find what works. So we sit down and we do America's Story from Masterbooks as a read aloud together, all three of my boys. 
That is a read aloud, that's a family subject. That is just one example of how you can group subjects together in your home. This is the first thing that I wanna share with you guys when it comes to homeschooling multiple kids that are all different ages. Make it as simple on yourself as you can while still delivering the information, the lesson, however it might look in your homeschool. It is something that can be easily adapted to to fit your life and your kids' ages. So I encourage you to give that a shot. Let me know in the comment section down below if that's something that you already do because it has taken me a long time to discover grouping subjects together. So the next thing I wanna talk about is going to touch a little bit on routine and schedule. If you've been around my channel for a while, you will know that I'm not a super rigorous routine homeschool mom, so to speak. We have a routine. I have my weekly planner. I have our days where I reverse record key for my brain, for my sanity. For me, it works better to just write down what we actually do accomplish. So that's how I record keep in our homeschool. So I don't necessarily wake up to, this is everything we need to get done today. This is what time you're gonna do it. You know, from 10 to 11 is history, from 11 to 12 is math. We kind of have a system or a flow that works in our home. I'm sure if you've been homeschooling for any amount of time, you have kind of figured out a system or flow that works for you. So it doesn't have to look like any other moms. What our days typically look like is my boys will wake up, they have three things that they have to do before we even have breakfast in the morning, which is make their bed, clean up their room, brush their teeth, then we will have breakfast together, and then they begin their math. And now it's easiest for my children to start with math because they're doing their independent subjects. So we use teaching textbooks for math. I will have one child that will hop on the computer and do his teaching textbooks. My other child will either sit and read quietly or he will do a worksheet in his language lessons for living education. And now while my older boys are working on their independent studies, I will sit with my youngest and we will do his math. He does a Becca for his math for first grade. Um, and I have a whole video that talks about that and the process of that. I'll link it down below if you're interested. But up until third grade, we use a Becca and then we switch to teaching textbooks. So my boys can do the more independent studies while I help my youngest with his math. Now, after everybody has done their independent subjects, we all come together in the living room or at the dining room table, wherever it happens to be for that specific day. We will come together with a snack and begin our group studies. This is where we will do Bible together. We will do our more than words from master books together. We will do our America story together. We will do our gather around homeschool curriculum together. This is when all of our subjects that get lumped, this is when that happens. So independent studies are what we start with and we end with our group subjects and we are typically done by lunchtime. Now it depends on the day, depends on when we get started, but most of the time our afternoon is free. Loud time, grab a snack for all your kids, bring them all in, including toddlers, including babies, have everybody together in the living room and let's do read aloud together. Let's read our history lesson together. Kids can have a snack, that will occupy them for a few minutes. They can sit and listen just like everybody else. I had no idea that was even a thing when I very first started homeschooling. So there are ways to adapt and make things fit the heartbeat of your home, if you will. So find a system that works for you. And that brings me straight into the one thing that I wanna share with you moms who have little kids in your home. Busy box is something that a mom that was a veteran homeschool mom at our co-op had taught me had told me about. A busy box is a simple Tupperware container with a lid. You are going to put inside that busy box something that will entertain or distract your child for a few minutes so you can tend to your older child that needs your time. I will link in the description box down below a couple different things that we kept in our busy boxes. We had marble runs. We had different Lego creations. We had kinetic sand play sets that would stay in our busy boxes that only came out during school time. And these toys, every time we pulled them out, were like brand new toys because your child only gets to play with them for such a short time. As soon as school is done or as soon as you finish that subject, you pick it up, you put the busy box away and they don't get to touch it again until school the next day. You need to have two or three different busy boxes so you're rotating out what they're actually getting to play with. Have one box be kinetic sand, have another box be um, the marble runs, have another box be puzzles, you know, educational puzzles that are great for toddlers. So I encourage you to give busy boxes a try. If it's something that you've never done before, try it. If you've never heard of it, try it. There are so many different seasons that we go through as homeschool families, as homeschool moms. I, like I said, am in a season where my kids are a little bit older, but I still have children who need me 
so much more and at different stages than the others. So naturally, my youngest finishes all of his school stuff first. So he still needs to have things to do that will occupy his time. So it's definitely something that even to this day, we utilize those busy boxes, but it looks different in our home. It's Legos. It's building and being creative in your bedroom for a few minutes while I help your older brothers out. And honestly, it's been a time that my children have come to love. So those are the tips that I wanted to share with you moms today. They are very simple things. There are simple ways to just tweak or adjust in your home to make it fit for you. Have a schedule of some sort that works for you. Find that flow and that rhythm to where your time can be split up. Your older children work on independent subjects while your younger ones get your time. Flip flop it around however you need to do it. Have subjects that you can group together as a family. Learn and grow and read together. Bring everything in as family subjects. Sit your little ones down with a snack on the couch. They can sit and eat a snack and listen as you do a history read aloud. I promise you, and they will get so much more from it than you actually realize. The last thing is the busy boxes. Grab some fun little items, put them in a Tupperware, store them away in a closet that only gets opened during homeschool time. Again, I'm gonna link some things down below, so be sure to check them out if you're interested. If you're interested in those items that I had for my little ones to keep them occupied during school time. So I'll link them down below. And then also don't forget to check out that playlist with all the other amazing homeschool mamas who are sharing how they do it. It is definitely not easy. And I promise you, we all can learn and grow from each other. If this is your first time stopping by my channel, I wanna thank you for being here. If this collaboration brought you to my channel, I would encourage you to hit that subscribe button, introduce yourself down in the comment section down below, say hi, I would love to touch base with you. Give this video a thumbs up if it is something that you enjoyed, it gives me feedback and lets me know what you guys enjoy seeing here on my channel. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and be encouraged, mama. You are not in this alone. I will talk to you soon.